So at a show the other day, I pushed down on my S1 switch and it didn't come back up. So it, the switch itself is it's supposed to be a push-push, right? You push it once, it engages, you push it again, it disengages. It's inside this. And it's not disengaging and it went down farther than it should be. So it's, it's wasted. I had to call Fender because this is my rarities strat. I couldn't find anything, any the specific information online, whether I needed a 250K pot or a 500K pot. I had to get this off of Amazon, but I called Fender and got the part number. This is the retail package part number. The guy gave me two part numbers, the one they use internally. Fender says the part number ends with 000, but the guy said the retail packaging might end with 049, and uh, I found it right on Amazon. No problem, Fender doesn't sell this part directly, apparently. And the replacement comes with a washer and a nut, and there's the switch itself, or the pot with the switch. So now I'll show you how it's supposed to work. So you push it once and it stays down, then you push it again and it pops back up. Nice and crisp click, no problem there. And this one just doesn't, it doesn't pop back up. So that's gotta come out. We're gonna replace that and gotta take the screws out. You see, I've already taken the strings off. I'll be putting, I'm gonna try these new. Well, they're not new, but I'm gonna try these rock and roll classics that are supposed to be more the, um, the old formulation for the wraps. See how I like those. I'm not gonna make you watch me take all the screws out. Cut to here where you can see what's going on. So this is the internals of the Rarity Strat. You can see it's got a grease bucket tone pot here on the bridge tone, a normal tone pot here on the middle and neck for the two single coil pickups. The single coils are marked 8.02 and 7.54. There's a bunch of wires coming off the bottom of here. It's a zip tie. It looks like, I don't know that Fender does that, but anyway, you can see that the S1 pot looks different a little bit than the one that I got for the aftermarket. This is closed off with this, and it's much taller too. It's a good bit, a good bit taller. What we want to see is where the wires are because it should be as simple as just pointing the tabs the same direction and putting the wires on it. So looks like the, so I'm just trying to get some of this out of the way. Some of this goes too. So there's the hot out to the jack and that looks like a, ground so the hot is on the middle lug these grounds look like they're on the far lug and then oh the whole thing is broken look at that that's why it won't work well that's disappointing so the switch itself works just fine you can see it clicks but it come came uncoupled i'm gonna i'm gonna pull this off of here and show you so you can see here ground, hot out to the jack in the middle, in from the switch on the right. So those things are gonna be pretty easy to replicate. These are the parts that I gotta get the same. Green and black in the middle, ground and ground on the right, and that's facing the lugs. Then on the right side of the lug, we've got a white jumper from the the white from the pickup in the middle is a white jumper out to the switch and then the red from the pickup. So these are all pickup wires and grounds. So let me get those unsoldered. Actually, I'm going to stop the video, take a picture, a couple of pictures, and uh, 
get back to you. This looks like it might be a much sturdier design with the metal, the metal legs instead of the plastic housing. So clearly Fender redesigned parts of this. All right, we're gonna take the top ones off first. And we're gonna get the red. Now we'll go out to the, the green and black. Combined grounds. And then last is this little white wire. Okay, now that that's so there, yeah, broken, broken. Now I can undo get these out of the way so I can get have better access so there's a little just a little bit of shrink wrap on there probably could have done that better we'll start on the outside see how that goes okay next uh, that's the hot to the jack in the middle my soldering iron might not be hot enough there we go and then uh, Hot from the switch. Okay, now I can flip this back over. Broken switch, rest of the way out. Now we will mount the new switch. We want to keep the orientation the same, so it's going to go in this way. And then place. Make sure the tabs are in the right place. And we're going to put the tool. Snug that up real good. Okay. Now, it should orient so that when the knob is on 10, the word volume points up. There we go. So that's how the switch is supposed to behave. Click down, click up. I noticed right away this uh, taper is a little firmer. The previous one was really loose. I could knock it. Basically when I picked, I would turn the volume down. So this is a little firmer. I don't think I needed the washer. You can see it sticks up just a little proud but I'm gonna leave the washer in there. And then this doesn't, it doesn't go down quite as far as it, as the old one did. So now it's just a matter of reconnecting everything. So the first thing we're gonna do, take this opportunity to reroute some of the wires too, because doing it at the factory is different than doing it on your workbench. So we're gonna get these lugs prepped with some solder. And we're going to start now. See, now I have to stop the video and go back and look at the... I did, no, I don't. The switch goes to this lug. The jack goes to the center lug and the ground goes to the far lug. So we're going to start with the switch. What I really need is a tiny ass pair of pliers. And I used to have them. They're probably in my motorcycle toolbox now. There we go. And then 
last but certainly not least looks like what they did was use one wire and just strip a piece in the middle of it and then connect the pickup to the other end which is probably good when you're doing this on a bench with no guitar so now i got to figure out how to do this there that's good and solid so i've just basically soldered it onto the lug instead of through the lug what matters is that it is connected to the lug. Now I need to stop, I definitely need to stop the video. I should have written this down and see which of these holes, the various ones go into. I remember the switch came from the middle. Hmm, that doesn't seem real tight either. It's the rest of them I'm gonna have to figure out. So let me look at the picture again and draw myself a picture. Now you can see I got my cheat sheet. Made a mistake, it only uses five of the holes, red, white with the black line, and I should have put BK, instead of BL usually means blue, then the plain white, then the black, then the green and black, and then this lug is empty. So that, that basically corresponds here, these two and these three. So I'm gonna prep each one with a tiny bit of solder. Okay, and then we're gonna start on the outside. You know what, I'm gonna trim that little piece of insulation off. That's a little sloppy fender. Love your stuff, do better. I am curious what, um, what wiring, what pickups this might match as far as colors go, because you know, people like to replace pickups. So green and black goes in this first, or middle lug here. My twitchy fingers, come on now. The ground goes here on this one. That's a weird angle. Yeah, this is the exciting stuff, folks. Watching somebody botch a solder joint. Oh, that gets hot real fast. You know what though, I'm gonna add a little just a little solder to the wires themselves. Tighten that up just a little bit. And then we've got white, black and white, or white with the black stripe and red. There's the white with the black stripe coming from the switch. And last but not leastest, so now I can tuck that down here. And then red goes in there in the end. Whoops. I'll leave it in there till the solder cools. Oh, that burns your thumb. That felt pretty good. Just test that to make sure. Test all those. They look good, look good, look good. All right, now we're going to test the guitar itself with the handy dandy plug-in tester -y. Turn on the test amp. So with the switch disengaged in the switch position here, we should have both coils of the humbucker. With the S1 down, I have both coils. With the S1 out, I have nothing. I wonder why that is. I put it back exactly like the old one. Maybe the internal design of this is different. Well, let's do some experimenting. Because these are, after all, just switches. So let's tin up these other spots and see if moving things around makes a difference. And when I touch that, it buzzes. I'm not sure I got a good connection on that.
So we've got the S1 out. And now the S1 in. Ah, I think I got it. So with the S1 out, we've got both coils. With the S1 in, we've got strong on the screw coil and very little on the lug coil. You can hear noise. And then when it kicks in the middle pickup, the noise drops. So that tells me that it's working right. So that's all it was. In the old style switch, this is where things needed to be connected. And on the new style switch, they need to be moved here. So that's it. So now I'm done. I can put a rack together and then turn that off and move it out of my way. I'm going to unplug the test amp. Because the quick cable's in the way. And now I can put the guitar back together. So thanks for joining me. Hope you learned something. And if you have one of these old style S1 switches, uh, this is really poorly constructed. I mean, just, I'm really kind of disappointed. The plastic, man, that's just, it's just cheap. No wonder it came apart. Kind of junk, to be perfectly honest. But the new one seems nice and sturdy. So, take it easy. Rock on.